Hey guys, Stell here and welcome back to Ultimate Admiral Dreadnought's Taskmaster Tuesday. This Taskmaster Tuesday revolves around building a battlecruiser, but it's Taskmaster, and that means there's a catch. We only get one barrel turrets. So this is going to make it quite an interesting challenge, and this uh, single barrel limitation goes for both mains and secondaries. We get two battlecruisers, we have to take down a fleet of a battleship, one battle cruiser, two heavy cruisers, two light cruisers, and two destroyers. Now, since we're only allowed to use single barrel turrets, torpedo tubes are also out of the question, or at least that is my interpretation of the rules. So it's going to be a pretty low firepower battle cruiser, which means that longevity is going to be important. And that shouldn't be really a problem, because my longevity is uh, pretty possible since armor is possible since I'm not really going to be using a lot of displacement for guns. So let's get to work. Now if this is your first Taskmaster Tuesday video, um, the way that this, uh, ta uh, sorry, that Taskmaster works is that I play challenges against four other YouTubers and they're all linked down below in the description. We each attempt the same task and we each try to do our level best to try and get the most points for that particular week. Whoever gets the most points wins that week. Now, for this week we had the ability to unlock all the hulls, which is going to make it quite convenient, because I can already pick what battle cruiser hull has the most amount of displacement possible. I'm not going to go for speed. I'm probably going to build a battle cruiser tank, which is quite a contradiction, because these things usually run away from stuff that they cannot kill. But in this case, I'm not really intending on running away. I'm intending to staying and fight. Uh, group 3 armor. The most protection that I can get. Reinforced everything. Citadel, turtle back. Let's go for gear turbines, oil... Well, maybe not even forced boilers. Natural boilers? I guess. Although induced are, well, quite a bit better. Funnel cost is not really a problem. Yeah, let's do it. Auxiliary, all of it. And shaft, two. Right. I have a cage mast. This is going to take up relatively little of the deck space. If I were to use an advanced tower seven, I would already be giving away quite a bit more of the deck space. There is a catch, though. This thing probably doesn't really have... Um, yeah, there we go. Base accuracy is only 4. Aiming speed is only 4. Long range accuracy is nice at 37, but the starting range for this one is a mere 12 kilometers. So long range accuracy is really not that useful. Base accuracy is, because I'm going to have to make every shot count. Without those numerous turrets, I'm going to be relying on just pumping out damage by either going for very high rate of fire which in 1917, sorry, 1916, is not really that possible. Um, or the alternative is to go for really big guns, which is not really possible because my biggest caliber is 14 inch. And then um, just making sure that whatever I hit either gets immediately obliterated or severely damaged. Now for the rear tower, um, I'm thinking, again, base accuracy. Is this really the best hull for this particular challenge? Yeah, the other one is 28,000. Is that a longer hull by any chance? It might be, but at least it has wing turrets. Hold up. That might give me the opportunity to put more turrets on here. Let me just build it and then see what I can fit. Hold up. Oh, that's nice. I was wondering why the super superstructure, the, the second one, is able to just limp over the, the part, but apparently that fits. The game doesn't see a problem with that. Good. Okay, if I were to go for single barrel 13 inch guns, oh, sorry, 14 inch guns, and they're only Mark II, the Mark. Three 13-inch guns do 50% less damage. 9,500 versus a mere 6,500. Reload time is about 50% worse. 
Let's make these guns count. And I'm really hoping I can fit a whole bunch. Have barbettes been invented? <laughs> yes, but they don't work. Because this hole, I'm not even sure whose hole this is, is sleek. So that makes it really difficult. So I might be able to put another turret in here with some creativity. But I will not be able to fire super firing. Ah, that's consideration. Okay. If I'm going to go with more 14 inch single barrels, I would put them here and here. I still have to sort out all the other bits, but don't worry about that. I can make that work. Uh, this is too big. Oh, hold up. This will work. 14 inch single barrel. So I would still more or less be able to bring five barrels to bear on a target with some creativity. The problem lies in that the other 14 inch guns on the other side are by definition going to be useless. They will not be able to target anything else. Now I'm thinking that secondary guns. Oh, really? I thought, you know what? A secondary gun. That should be easily able to fit up there. Well, you'd think so, but you'd be mistaken. Because this superstructure seems to be glitched, or rather... Well, I'm not even sure if you want to call it glitched. It just doesn't allow me to put anything on there. Hmm. That's a waste, because that means I'll barely have any secondaries. Can you put 2 inch on there? That's the smallest gun? No. I could put 2 inch here. 4 weight offset of 16%. I might be able to cram another turret in the back here. Giving me an even heavier broadside. And that would give me 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 guns. If, if all the guns are able to go onto target. That remains to be seen. Now let's drop some speed. I'm not going to go anywhere quickly. But when I get there, I'm there to stay. If I'm going to stick to this hull, but I think I will. Um, that means geared turbines. Krupp, yes. I already did that. Triple. Uh, all the anti-floods. All reinforced bulkheads. Shaft 2. And all... Oh, Jesus. Yeah, that's not quite going to fit. The problem is I only have a thousand tons left. And that's without a single secondary gun. That's without a coincidence or, or actually... Um, yeah, let's go with the coincidence rangefinder. That's without an improved system for loading or rotating turrets. Although I don't think that's particularly important. And it's without a funnel. You know, a funnel, which is kind of useful. I'm not sure if this is going to work. Or rather, I believe it will not. Because I don't have any staying power. I might have enough armor to withstand the heavy cruisers. Sorry, heavy cruiser and two light cruisers that they have. But not the, the battleship and the battlecruiser. And with my little firepower... I don't think that I'll be able to do enough damage before those things kill me. So, once again, pick a different hull, different design. At least here, I should be able to put on casemates, but the displacement... Oh, actually, it's not that bad. It's 28.5. Speed to nothing, range to nothing, bulkheads to all of it. I don't think I've ever switched my designs this many times. Taskmaster challenge. But then again, I'm trying to win. We have decided upon a pact to break the winning streak that Mr. Spartan has going. And for that, we're going to need a good ship. Alright, this time around, around, let's actually get a funnel installed. And let's go for forest... F foist? Forced boilers. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, yeah, there we go. 100% engine efficiency, which is not weird, considering we're only doing 23 knots. Now then, uh, barbettes. 
these things are pretty heavy. We still only have the centerline Mark uh, two 14 inch guns. But at least I'll be able to put on quite a bit of secondary armament, which I will need if I stand any kind of hopes of doing damage. Uh, how heavy are these? 196 tons. Reloads in 20 seconds. Range 13-2. They're Mark III guns. What are the others? All of it's Mark III. Newer stuff hasn't been invented yet. Okay, I want two over there, and I want two over there. We have a, a hefty four weight offset. You need to shift back a little. Or a lot. There. Alright. Uh, rangefinder. Coincidence, because gun base accuracy, and I don't really need the long range accuracy. Uh, we have 100 shells per gun. That puts me at 400 shells. That's 100 salvos. I doubt I'm going to live that long. If I go for increased, I get 135. But my displacement goes up by about 300 tons. That's not fun. If I want to make this ship work, especially against 1911 battleship and battle cruiser, I'm going to need staying power. As long as I can stay afloat with my ships, I should be able to eventually dish out enough damage. Now, let's say that a 14-inch gun is also what I'll find on the battleship. At 10,000 meter range, I would need a 17.3-inch armor belt in order to withstand that punishment. I currently have 7 plus 100% is 14. So I need more. This would do it. But the moment we get closer, I'm in trouble again. The moment I get to 7,500 meters, I'm at 18.7, and that's if they have 14 inch guns. But they're, they are Mark, sorry, they're 1911. Let's see if this will work. 8.5 inch, uh, heavy on the conning tower. Deck is not important because I don't expect plunging fire at all. Let's go with more secondary armor as well. Because these things are a bit flash fiery. Lidite propellant, yes. Reloaders, enhanced. Gives me a fire, gives me a shot every 45 seconds. As opposed to every... Every 51 seconds. That saves me 6 seconds. Every time. It's basically a flat 10% DPS buff. Let's do it. It gives me 200 tons. Um, I can barely make the ship any slower. Yeah, that won't go down anymore. If I reduce this from 4 to 3, it saves 140 tons. But it also seri well, not seriously reduces flash fire chance, but a bit of ammo detonation chance. And I do happen to be carrying ammunition, which is pretty volatile. Let's go with 4. Uh, triple bottom hull. Flat out resistance is nice because it just negates, or not so much negates damage, but resists it. Uh, also reduces torpedo damage. Anti-flood. Yeah, I'm definitely going to keep that. Reinforced bulkheads. Yes, please. Citadel, Citadel has to be four. It has to be a turtle bike because that gives you a jump from 6.5% resistance all the way up to 15%. <sighs> okay. Um, a 5-inch gun is 183 tons if you use a triple. If you use a single, it's a mere 81 tons. They fire out to 8.8. .8. Now, the destroyers and light cruisers in 1916 probably don't have any long-range torpedoes, so they'll probably rush in. My turning circle is 738 meters, which is substantial for a ship like this. I mean, I have no speed, but apparently also no hull factor. It's a long ship. Making it difficult to turn. Alright. If I go for 4 inch. That's 27 tons per. Firing out to 7.3 range. Yeah, let's just put a couple of these things on. Okay. 
Can I put this one on here? Yeah, but it kind of interferes with the, the uh, firing arc of the other one. Can I go for one more? No, that's too many. Alright, so that... <laughs> Jesus. That's the extent of my defense against destroyers. I'm going to sacrifice my 8-inch guns. I'm going to need a few more 4-inch guns. Get rid of these. I, I said a few more 4-inch guns, right? <laughs> About that. I also have case-made guns, which are 3-inch. They're only 9 tons. That's potentially fittable. And casemates are single barrel. So yes, that should work. Okay, then I still have a, a bit of displacement left. That is going to go into armor. 9 inch of armor belt. 9 inch of belt armor extended. Can we get 10? Yes. 10. Turrets up to 10. Secondaries up to 10. Conning tower up to 10. And we still have some room. More staying power. 11, that's too much. Okay, 10-5. And, uh, well, 10-4. There we go. Okay, this is the uh, battlecruiser Uji. She is dead slow at 23 knots. But I hope that she's here to stay. And that I can fire enough of those salvos from those 14-inch guns to deal damage against their battleship and their battlecruiser. Um, and their heavy cruiser probably as well, and that the light cruiser and destroyers can be dealt with with a 4-inch gun. Here goes nothing. Let's see. Identification on the battleship. Uh, dual barrel, relatively small. Okay. Battle cruiser. Whoa. That's some, some more substantial firepower, I think. That's ten barrels. That's two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. Lovely. Now, I can, with these ships, stay pretty wide. It is usually risky to go broadside, but in this case, I might get away with it. Because in this case, I have way more armor than I would normally carry. Jesus, that's seriously 0.2%? 0.7? I did bring a rangefinder, but that is atrocious. We have decided to target the battle cruiser. Okay. Not necessarily bad, because these guns do look the biggest. And battle cruisers tend to be a little easier to sink. Now, the win condition is uh, get the most kills in the shortest amount of time. Whoever has the most structural integrity remaining wins. Tiebreaker will be the time it took to sink the ships. There's no complex point system. You just got to make sure that your ships survive. This accuracy is not really filling me with confidence about my ships. 1% chance to hit. And here comes the little guy. What do you carry? Two torpedo tubes and another two right on the stern. A couple of very small guns. Potentially 3 inch. Okay, there's another smoke screen right there. Range is seven and a half, which means that the four inch guns are almost in range. We carry 300 rounds per gun, so that's 4,800 total. I think we're gonna need quite a bit of that in order to deal with this destroyer. Now time to get those four inch guns <laughs> to do some work. Can I get a good shot of that? Pun not intended.
Hello. Come here, destroyer. 0.7% chance to hit. Yeah, but at least I fire quickly, right? Seven and a half seconds. And then the casemates fire every five seconds. But they need to get closer. Alright, identification is actually quite advanced already. 34%. That's not bad for three and a half minutes of game time. Now, have we been hit yet? Because I want to see what sort of caliber it is. Ideally, it wouldn't do any damage, but then again, I wouldn't be able to identify it without having taken any damage. The DD has a smoke. It didn't pop it at the start, so it still has some time. Has it launched the torps? You know what? Let's assume it launched the torps. Hard to starboard. I don't get how this thing is a 741 turning circle. It doesn't really make sense. Because it feels a hell of a lot faster than that. Invocation 5-5 five, five and 4-8. Wait. Why did you... <laughs> the Uji switched her main guns to the destroyer. No, silly. <laughs> No, I need those main guns to take down the battleship because I have no other options. I have no torpedoes, nothing. So far we have taken one hit out of 236 shots fired. And that was a 9 inch shell. That cannot have come from the destroyer. So I'm thinking that that was the battleship. That's good. Because if the battleship has only 9-inch guns, then she's not really that much of a threat. Famous last words. I mean, she has to hit me first, and if she, even if she hits me at a range of, let's say, 7.5, I'm thinking she might not be able to do damage. Uji is on fire. Still no hits on the battleship. Now, can we please get these destroyers killed? There we go. The Aventurier, or Aventurier, it's a French ship. Eight torpedoes, range 6.7. That does put me in torpedo range. That's not necessarily a spot where I want to be. So you carry eight. That means you can do two torpedo attacks. Reduced ammo for the torpedoes. So if I want to, and if I want to play dangerously, I can sort of push in. I can push into the destroyer, provoke a torpedo attack, dodge it, famous last words, um, and have it do it again. And hopefully, it'll be out of ammo. Or rather, after two salvos, it will be out of ammo, period. Okay, we have the battleship identified, that's the ocean. Oh, sorry, the ocean. Nine inch guns. Can they hurt me? No. No, they cannot. Because they have an only 3.3% <laughs> 3 .3 chance to pen. If the game will actually tell me. There we go. 3.3. 3.3. Battlecruiser. 14 inch guns. 29% chance to pen. This thing is more of a threat. Oh, sorry. I don't know yet about the battle cruiser. Wait. If I don't know yet, how is that popping up? It, uh, what? I'm not supposed to know what sort of guns it has. Now, the Ocean has many bulkheads. What's my chance to pen it? 39. Good lord, we're going to have to get quite close to this one. 11.3 inch belt plus 84%. Oof. Belt extended only 6-2. Um, right. That's going to make it really quite difficult to try and pen this ship. I'm going to have to get close. The battle cruiser has been identified. 51% chance to pen her. And in reverse, 33-4. Or 33.9, yeah. Okay, gotcha. 
Have the DDs been identified? Sort of. I want you to engage the uh, Garfou. And we got the light cruiser uh, Talisman. Which the British would absolutely call Talisman, but this is a French ship. Then we have another ship which has not been identified, so that's the heavy cruiser, since they only had one of those. And it's the last thing that I don't know what it is yet. Uh, so far, structural integrity on both my ships is 100%. Let's just speed this thing along, because this is probably going to take a while. Ideally, get rid of the DD, because that thing, there we go, did send out torpedoes. The other DD also sent out torps. And it looks like, from the angle, that these two torpedoes came from the Aventurier, leaving the Gerfou to probably torp in this general direction. So that's where I try not to be. Now, can we get this destroyer killed by any chance? What's the reload on those torps? Whoa! Yeah, that would do it. 14-inch gun? Yeah. Okay. That's one of the DDs dead. I just wasn't expecting to do it with a 14-inch gun. Don't use your mains. Use your secondaries. It's nice to put a 14-inch shell right through a destroyer. But it doesn't really help me in the sense that I'll not have enough ammo to take on the battleship then. Secondaries on the Aventurier. Your secondaries, Haruna, on the Talisman. If that works. Yeah, it does. Oh, and she smokes up. Oh, now the whole ship's targeting the light cruiser. No, that's not quite what I had in mind. Damage done, three and a half thousand. Damage taken, 63. But that's not really factoring in the whole thing that I just wiped out a destroyer in one shot. Oh, shit. Is that the battleship that's damaging me? Yeah, I think so. No, it was the battlecruiser. The battlecruiser did pen damage. The Soleil. The Sun. Okay, detach Haruna. There's only one torpedo threat in the form of the destroyers. The light cruisers don't carry. The Colbert does carry. And the Montcalm also carries. Oh, crap. They're supposed to have one heavy cruiser, not two. Great way to shoot yourself in the foot like that. Albeit with a single turret. Now, the Ocean did take some flooding damage, but seems to be unaffected. She's almost back to 100%. There we go. What's the chance to pen the battlecruiser? 76%. Focus on the battlecruiser. That's the bigger threat right now. Chance to hit? About 4%. That is not great. How much ammo do you carry? Increased ammo for shells. Lovely. Same for you, I suppose. No, you went with increased ammo for torps, which you don't carry. Right. Aventurier is just shadowing. It's not actively torpedoing me. Whoa. Good hit. A couple of There we go. Thank you very much. That wipes out the destroyer. Now I'm going to push in. Because now I'm going to try and get closer to the broadsiding battlecruiser. If I can get hits on her, she might go down. Minimum bulkheads. And it's not a bad thing to turn to, because there are the torps. Light cruisers on fire. The Tourville. I'm also going bow in. Which should further improve the chances of ricochet for me. Yeah, ricochet chance high. For the battlecruiser and for the battleship. High. Good. Maintain bow in and don't go fast. Haruna, same deal. Don't go too quick, but a little faster than the Uji, because you're a little behind. That was in the secondary tower. 
Tourville doesn't carry Torps, but the Colbert and the Montcalm do. Only at a range of 4-4, four, four, though. They're fast torpedoes. I'm starting to question whether I should, maybe, have taken more ammunition with me. Because this is starting to look a little desperate. I mean, I still have 292 left. I'm only firing on two barrels. So it's going to take me a long time to go through that battle cruiser. But still... Still, it might not be enough. It really depends on how hard I can hit the battleship. OG, stay bow in, buddy. Ah, oh, the Solai is turning. High ricochet chance. Okay, switch target. Uji. Really close. Uji's taken on the talisman. Not really hitting her yet, except with some secondary fire. She has no armor whatsoever. In that case, high explosive of any variety will do it. 30% chance to hit. There we go. One good HE hit. No more life cruiser. Haruna. This way, please. OG, 32%. 33%. The reason that I switched target from the battle cruiser, it is still a big threat, but this thing is far easier to hit. And on top of that, the Soleil was angling, which she now is not. So right now, it is more favorable to target the Soleil, but now I'm already dialed in on the Talisman. Sorry, Talisman. So I'll try and finish her off. But at the same time, there is a torpedo threat. Port and starboard from the heavy cruisers. So I have to keep a pretty close eye on what these ships are doing. Let's try and target the Montcalm. And maybe I can take it out of the threat value. Out of the threat matrix. Yes, there we go. That's more like it. She's flooding. Three compartments. Maximum bulkheads. She might survive that. It won't be pretty. The damage is substantial on the talisman. Talisman. But it should at least slow her down. Substantially. Making her far easier for the Uji to finish off. Range is only 1.4 now. Range of the battle cruiser is a mere 4.2. I'm gonna fire. Come on, 83% chance to hit. Make it happen, Uji. Make it happen. Yes, there we go. Fire and more flooding. This time two stern compartments are going to fill up quickly. And at the same time the Haruna is getting a couple of shots off against the Montcalm. There's the torpedo. Missing the Montcalm. Crap. Okay, there goes the light cruiser. Perfect. New target. Colbert. Turrets swinging over to starboard. Torpedo. Should not be a problem. Just full right rudder. I might outturn my turret slightly. Hit. 13 inch hit, partial pen. This ship does have armor. Switch back to armor piercing. So auto select. I really don't want to get torqued by these things. Ow! Jesus. That was a 13-inch shell hitting the stern deck extended because the battle cruiser now spots an opportunity to do damage to the Uji. And rightly so, because I'm only at 4.3 kilometer range and she has a pretty good chance to pen me. Montcalm has also just torpedoed me. There we go. That's a lot better. Bulkheads, maxi. Understood. Another two shells hit, damaging the, mol the, the coal bear even more. Back to port. 
Good damage on the Moncom as well, which just torpedoed. Thank you, Haruna. We just need to put the Colbert down before she torpedoes again. These things reload very quickly. 187 seconds, so a little over 3 minutes, and they're good to go again. Colbert, 21% buoyancy and dropping. Oh, you missed her. Not by much, but by enough. Max port turn. Keeping a very close eye on that torpedo launcher. I don't like that thing at all. Come on. Do it. No! Steady as she goes. No, you... Oh, you missed again! You missed again. Oh, and you also missed? I feel like I'm too close to the cold bear now. Let's just move away. There we go. There's the torpedo. Hard to starboard. I will not be able to avoid that. Oh, shit. That's going to hurt. It's also going to hurt my score substantially more. Oh, no. Oof. Structural integrity down to 75%. Well, there goes my win, probably. Another damage hit to the Montcalm. Put the secondaries on the cold bear. It's closer. Might be able to hit that. Uji. Buoyancy 85%, but she should be able to fix that. You missed again? Come on now. Don't be like that. Colbert seems to be dead in the water. 1.3 knots. She is dead in the water. More flooding. Can you finally finish her off? Because that'd be great. Montcalm probably will not torpedo with the uh, already sinking Colbert in the way. Okay, there we go. Uji to turn in. Haruna to turn in. Once these are dead, the torpedo threats are gone. And I can probably uh, quite a bit safely, or a bit safer then, start to push in. Which I will need. Especially against that battleship to get a couple of good punishing hits in. Ammunition 251 on the Haruna. 234 on the Uji. Oh, crap. Moncom tried it again. Sunk. Very good. Uji should be fine. The only thing that I'm worried about is that she might be opened up too much. There, we should be fine now. New target, the battle cruiser. Those 13-inch guns of yours need to be silenced. Nope. Uh, secondaries on the Tourville. Which is more of a nuisance than anything else. I'm not really finding that thing to be terribly threatening. Because it only has a 4-inch and a 3-inch gun. And her chance depends probably about... Yeah. 3.3%. Which happens to be the exact same thing as the battleship. So it's like they just can't pen. Even though the battleship has 9-inch guns. And the light cruiser has 4-inch guns. Why is this Soleil so difficult to hit? Just aim directly for the sun. Nope. Missed again. Come on now. 24 damage. Wow. Mid belt. Partial pen. Now we're starting to ricochet. She's turning back in though. She's opening up. I can use that. Yeah. The light cruiser's taking some fire. We destroyed a main gun. Interesting. So what's your main gun armor? Oh, yeah, right. Nothing. <laughs> About that. <laughs> there we go. Flooding. That's exactly what I was hoping for. Because then she's going to slow down quickly. There's some there we go. 25-7, 25-5, 25-3, 25-1. Slow your ass down. Another fire. She's already half flooded. 
22.2, 21.8. She's still slowing down. 20.7. Accuracy, 30%. Angle? Not great. Ah, there we go. Two more compartments get hit. Three, actually, because the rudder is also going. And she's gone. Good work. Now we just slowly start to demolish the battleship, because I only have a 30% chance to pen. Speed up a little more. Yeah. <laughs> Quinn's just waking up as I'm doing this video. <laughs> Apparently he doesn't seem to value my chances very highly. <laughs> Based on this, uh, this groaning and moaning in the background. Well, I think he's not wrong. I never should have taken that torpedo. Aside from that torpedo hit, I didn't really take that much. It was 6% here, and then a little bit here, but the damage came from the torp. There we go. Flooding on the battleship. Light cruiser's probably happy that we're not really paying attention to that one. It's already taken me an hour, this fight. Uji bit more to port. What's the speed on the Tourville, Max? 24.5. So I can catch that? Sort of? Depending on how quickly she wants to run away? That's interesting. She's probably not going full speed. 23 knots. Chance to pen went up to a whole 37%. Careful, buddy. Here we come. Now, it looks like the Ocean is currently focused on Haruna. So I can exploit that and bring the Uji to port, opening up with more guns. If the battleship is distracted, I will use that. More flooding on the battleship. I guess that belt extended is starting to take a bit more punishment than it likes. Maybe the Ocean is going to flood out before I actually just blow it up. What sort of propellant are you using? Cordite 1. Okay, so flash fire chance is not likely. Cordite is pretty stable, from what I remember. A bit more. More fire. Another flooding. Not bad. Not bad. Buoyancy 27. Are you still focused on Haruna? You are. Look at the list on that ship. That is not good. And in one of the future patches, at least from what I remember, they are working on making sure that ships that have this much of a list don't actually get to fire. Because it's a bit weird to have a ship that's listing that badly to still be able to shoot. Buoyancy is 2%, 1%. More flooding, gone. Battleships sold. Haruna, I have a new mission. Maximum to port. Well, maybe not maximum, but at least enough to bring your guns to bear, at least the stern ones. Which are just short of the secondary tower, so they can do a 360 degree turn. Saving me a lot of time. And now I can take out the Tourville. The turrets have already switched to high explosive. Dealing serious damage to the Tourville. Opening up the hull and starting some fires. And the Tourville has nothing on me. No torps. No gunpower. Not even speed anymore. Now, as um, an overall score, because I don't expect to lose any more, it's 74% for the battleship Uji and 93% for the battleship Haruna. So this means that my score is these two combined. If I had not taken the torpedo damage, I would have probably been at 90 and 94-ish, or 93. Really? Boom. That. Jeez, they put most of the ship on fire. Like that. That was crippling, that hit. Really nice. Well done. Let's 
speed it up. Got to check the score just before she goes down. There, let's let's cut it close enough there. So I get 74% structural here and a 93% structural there for a score of 167 points out of a t potential 200. Not great, not terrible. I hope that the other guys aren't doing as well. We shall see who wins this one. There. Two reveal sinks. Uh, tiebreaker 851-54 in case it does come down to time. Now, make sure you check out the other guys. Links down below in the description. It is going to be every day's different. Spartan Elite, History Guy Gaming, and Brother Monroe. Check out their designs, have fun with their videos, and let me know what you think should be another challenge for next week. Thank you for watching. I shall see you guys next week for the next Taskmaster Challenge.